Good morning and welcome to the Daily Halacha. We are studying Sharim B'Tfilah and the Daily Halacha is sponsored by Doreen and Marshall Lerner in memory of Marshall's mother, Alma Lerner, Asna Bat Moshe. We are now moving on to the next chapter in our study and we are now moving on to Tsa'aka, which is introduced by the author by teaching us a Pasuk in Shemot. Vayahi Vayamim Harabim Haheim Vayamat Melech Mitraim Vayanchu B'nei Yisrael Min Ha'avodah a long time after that, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites were groaning under the bondage and cried out, and their cry for help from the bondage rose up to God. Here, the language that Rabbi Pincus focuses on is Vayizaku. The chapter is called Tzi'aka, but he notes a couple of sources, some from the Zohar, that Zi'aka and Tzi'aka both represent the same type of prayer, and that is wordless prayer. If we're trying to identify the difference between what we're talking about in this chapter, tse'aka, and what we've spoken about in the previous chapter, she'ava and bitsur, also prayers from a deep, deep place of pain and distress, the difference is the first two chapters were in a situation where we still had the wherewithal to express ourselves in words. Now we come to tse'aka, and we can no longer do that, either because we've exhausted all the words available to us, e e either the tfilot, the liturgy available to us from our tradition, or even using our own vocabulary to create our own prayer and to call out to God. Now we've come to a point where we can no longer do that. Rabbi Soloveitchik spoke about this type of prayer as well, and I'll share with you one snippet, and tomorrow we'll look a little bit deeper into this idea of tze'aka. But here's what Rabbi Soloveitchik says. Prayer as tze'aka lacks the gradual development of theme, the structural formalism, and the etiquette-like orderliness which halacha required of the mitpalel. When we are engaged in halachic prayer, shacharit, mincha, and mariv, we dive in the Amida, which has a formal structure, three sections, each building on the other. And that is what Rabbi Salvecha calls formulism and an orderliness, and that is classic halachic prayer. And then he says, while tefillah is a meditative, reflective act, tzitaka is immediate and compulsive. In the other types of prayer, since we're using our words or the words of the liturgy, we take time to consider what they mean, what we're aiming for, what we are praying for. When it comes to tzitaka, it's immediate. We don't even have time. It's almost out of sense, out of, out of a sense of frustration when every other road, every other avenue has been exhausted, and now we're at se'aka. I'll just make one final point that both Rabbi Pincus and Rabbi Soloveitchik make, that this is a very powerful type of prayer. As Rabbi Soloveitchik notes, that it is after this pasuk that we just read, again from Shemot, Perek Bet, Pasuk, Chaf Gimel, chapter 2, verse 23 in Exodus, that is when God hears the prayers of B'nai Yisrael, and that is when the redemption begins. So there's something very powerful about this type of prayer, this tzaka or this zi'aka, this wordless, wordless prayer, uh, that again does not have that formal structure of what Rabbi Salavetcha calls halachic tefillah. It comes from the depths of our heart, almost from a sense of frustration. Tomorrow, we'll see more about how Rabbi Soloveitchik uh, develops this very, very important and powerful idea of tefillah. Have a wonderful day.